We just got another one. Help is on the way for the defensive line from the Miami Columbus Pipeline. Dalen Russell, welcome to the U. You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Sunday. I'm Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. So the Miami Hurricanes on Saturday night landed their ninth verbal commit for the class of 2024, three-star defensive lineman. All oh, the star chasers are going crazy now, but trust me, this player is worth the investment. Dalen Russell, he's listed at six foot one, 235 pounds, but this was interesting. Uh, Gabby Arudia from 24 seven noted that despite his 235 pound listing, Mr. Russell is now pushing about 170. So this is why folks, I always say this. A lot of times the height and weights can be out of date, okay? This is why whenever we interview players on this show, and we're going to have one on this week, I don't want to spoil the surprise just yet. I like to ask them, hey, what's your height and weight these days? Because those listings can be way off. So Dalen Russell has put on a lot of size. And folks, just this past season in high school at Miami Columbus, he was the Miami Herald's Miami-Dade County Defensive Player of the Year in the 4M to 3M classification, 62 tackles, eight TFL, eight sacks, okay? So Dalen Russell is going to bring some serious versatility and some serious pass rushing to that Miami Hurricanes defensive line. I didn't come alone today, folks. We come with friends here. Weekend staple on the show, weekend regular. You know him, you love him. Chalupa Batman is with us. Chalupa, how you feeling about Dalen Russell? I'm feeling great. You know, it's always a good day when we get a new cane, another big guy for the trenches, versatile, strong kid. I was jumping up and down for it. Okay, so what, what's your take on Russell uh, out of Miami Columbus? And like, to me, this is someone who I'm interested to see what kind of a role he's going to fit into at Miami. Is he going to be a jumbo defensive end? Is he going to play inside? He can even maybe, you know, drop into outside linebacker at times. Like, where, where could you see Dalen Russell playing at Miami? I think the biggest word with Dalen Russell is versatility. Mm. When you turn on his film, you see the versatility. I think it's really interesting that he added some of that size, too. You can kind of see that he's a bit heavier. Even when I looked at my boss at 235, that doesn't feel yeah, right. It's not right. Just he, I was thinking maybe he just wears it well because he, he's, he's a bit of a thick young man. You see him in a two-point stance. You see him with his hand in the dirt. I think he's one of those – and every time I say this, I can tell people's ears are going to perk up. Ruben Bain-ish guys. Now, when I say that, when I say that, it's he doesn't have the crazy height and length, but he can be an effective pass rusher from the defensive end spot. He can kick inside, have his hand in the dirt. They use it. They use him like that quite a bit. So I think he gives Gidry someone that's versatile. He's someone that could, like you said, he could play outside. He could play defensive end, especially against the run. He gives you some extra beef on the edge. But yeah. you could also kick him inside, wicked pass rusher from the inside, and you still don't lose any of that run stuffing capability if you kick him inside, which is the worry sometimes if you move like a defensive end inside. Yeah, that's good against the pass. If they hit you with a draw, he's probably getting blown off the ball. Not this kid. He's, he's strong at the point, physical. He's got long arms, too. So he's he's six one, but a lot of it is arms. It's like yeah. it's like well, he's, 60% he's got a, arms. Yeah, his his wingspan. Oh, I, I I thought I had it written down. I know it's one of those things where his wingspan is a few inches longer than his actual it's, height. Yeah. It, it, when you see him in his two-point stance and you see those arms, that's the first thing that pops out to you is, yep. holy cow, yep, he's like yep. all arms. And yeah. one of those big kids with arms that knows how to use them too. Like he'll, he knows how to stack an offensive lineman, get off of them, shed blocks. I really like the pickup. Let's not focus on the stars, guys. Just watch the film. I really like him. And the versatility, Dono, I think the versatility is going to be huge. 
Well, okay, and let's also talk about the chess games that come into recruiting. Because first of all, um, it's great to keep the Columbus pipeline open. Miami has yes. so many connections, and Columbus has an excellent football program, yeah. folks. And you've got Mario Cristobal, Alex Mirabal, Alonzo Highsmith all went to that high school, so it's important for them to keep that going. But yeah. then also, a teammate of Dalen Russell is a, a five-star who's currently committed elsewhere, talking about TJ Capers. And I know, obviously, Miami has not stopped recruiting Capers, who is a Louisville commit, and he's saying all the right things about Louisville, but you lock up a teammate and a good friend of his, that's part of the whole chess match of recruiting. Definitely. It's, it, it's well, you know, we can't get to you. Your best friend probably can, you right. know? There's it, there's at least going to be that conversation of, hey, I know you said Louisville, but I'm going on an OV in you know, June. How about you come with me? Yeah. You know, it, there we see it with receivers and quarterbacks all the time. They, they want to play together, especially, you know, you don't just play football at your high school with, with these guys. You play in tournament ball with them. If you're a two sport athlete, you probably travel and play AAU with them as well. You build a, a relationship. And what's Mario's biggest thing when it comes to recruiting? Relationships. relationships. The pipelines and the relationships. So just like with a receiver, we're going to talk later where Mario doesn't really have to do all the work because his buddy's committed and he's doing a lot of the work for us. You're going to see the same thing with capers. It's going to be, you know, wake up and get a text from your buddy. Hey, uh. How you feeling? It's palm trees in Miami. I don't know what it looks like, you know, <laughs> over in Louisville, but, you know, I'm on my visit and he doesn't have to have any questions that he feels like he's getting coach speak on now. He can ask right. his boy, hey, they say this, this and this. What are they telling you? Uh, they're telling me the locker room looks like what does it really look like? And, you know, his buddy can actually tell him, no, talk to Coach Jason Taylor, talk to Mirabal, talk to Cristobal. I like these guys. Give them the time. That that has to account for something. We we all either watch TV shows, buy cars, get food off recommendations from our friends, mm -hmm. right? I eat built bars now because of Dono. Hey, look at you. <laughs> you know, it's it's it, but word of mouth means something from someone you care about. So when it's your teammate that's been in the trenches with you, that's went to war with you and says, give them, give them another listen, you're at least picking up the phone. Yeah. And by the way, you were right to bring up the word relationships because there are a few other layers of the onion to peel back on Dalen Russell's recruitment. I want to talk about that. Plus, there are other players Chalupa Batman and I are going to talk about on this episode. Uh, LJ McCray, four-star defensive lineman, has locked in a visit to Miami. Everyone's going to be here on June 9th. It's crazy. Oh, four-star yeah. receiver, Braylon Staley. Uh, we want to talk about uh, four-star offensive tackle, Nair Daniels. We want to talk about four-star tight end. Kylan Fox. We have so much to get to on this episode of Locked on Canes. Keep it locked. And man, I'm so glad Chalupa brought up Built Bar because if you're looking for a delicious snack, but you don't want all the sugar and calories, you need the best tasting protein bar ever built. You got to try this. If you're like me, you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise taste. I've got just the thing for you. Built Bars and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and they taste amazing. Seriously, they taste so amazing, you're not going to think they're good for you. You got to try this. What makes Built Bars so good? For starters, they're all covered in 100% real dark chocolate. They come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, cookies and cream. Uh, I had a, a limited edition red velvet puff for breakfast this morning. Those are so good, man. The birthday cake puffs are back. The red velvet puffs are out now. There's so many options. I'm not sure how Built does it, but... These bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. Only 130 calories, just 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars and Built Puffs at Built.com. Now you can also get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section. Grab yourself a box of Built Bars. If you're close to a Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with hit flavors like brownie batter puff and churro puff. And you can still order specialty flavors at Built.com. You'll be happy you did because I love me some Built Bars. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. And for the everydayers... We are, guys, uh, I'll throw the name out here because we've been chatting the last couple of days. Uh, Isaiah Thomas, Miami Hurricane safety commit, is uh, is going to be joining us this week. So I'm looking forward to talking to Isaiah. I can see, Chalupa, you're looking forward to hearing from Isaiah Thomas. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
Heck yeah. He hasn't he hasn't done a lot of interviews. He talked a little bit when he was he was at a rivals camp like about a week ago. He like threw up a U and talked a little bit. Seems like a pretty kind of quiet, humble kid. So I don't think he does a lot of, you know, lives and things like that. So it'd be so cool to hear his recruiting story, you know, here. He's another one with relationships and yep. you know, Mesador. So it'll be interesting to, to to hear from him. I'm excited about that. Yeah, one. I'm looking forward to asking him, like, what kind of a role Akeem Mesador might have played in his recruitment. Yeah. And then I got to get his take on Lance Gidry and just what it's like oh. to be recruited from that dude. Because, oh, G Gidry. And he's a safety. Yeah. So you yeah. know Gidry yeah. was instrumental in his recruiting. Yeah, and I wanted to say something else about the recruiting of Dalen Russell because, Chalupa, when you brought up relationships, it got me thinking because um, someone weeks ago, one of our listeners asked me a question about how influential parents are in the decisions players uh. make in recruiting. And obviously it varies from player to player, but for, yes. for some players, the parents are really influential. And I know in the case of Dalen Russell, his mom has been blown away by Miami's recruiting efforts on the fact that, you know, Cristobal and staff and the primary recruiter uh, for Dalen Russell is Big Joe Salavea, who he really respects. Nice. Uh, the secondary recruiter, Alex Mirabal, because of the Columbus connection. But obviously, Jason yeah. Taylor has very much been involved in this, as has Cristobal. And I know that Dalen Russell's mother uh, being so impressed by what Miami has been doing was kind of a big part of his decision because, you know, it's like, uh, you know, for me, I always say happy wife, ha happy life, but that, that goes for mom as well. Happy mom. There's, there's no good rhyme for that one, but I know no, that, that I, I was, I was wondering where you were going. I was like, Oh, he's going to do this. <laughs> I didn't know where I was going with it either. To be honest with you, someone else's son, right? Yeah. What, what's exactly. Jason? Ta someone else's son. That's right. You recruit the parents. You have to, at the end of the day, you're not just taking their son and playing football. He, he's living there. He's eating there. You, you're teaching him life lessons. He's going to be a grown man, a fully functioning adult when he leaves this university. So the parents have to be comfortable leave, taking their baby and handing them off to essentially a stranger. Yeah. You know, you, you, you can meet them and, and get as comfortable with them during the recruiting process. But at the end of the day, it's a stranger. So you have to be as comfortable as you can. So there is something to when Jason Taylor sits down and says, no, my biggest priority is I understand this is someone else's kid. And and that's how I approach this first before he's a three star defensive lineman, before he's explosive, before he's physical. He's someone else's son. So we 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 attack that first. And I think that that's invaluable, man. I, it, if you're listening and you've got kids, I know that has to hit home for you. Yeah. Because you want to feel safe when, when when you're letting your, your your child go out of state to another school. It's not like he's 20 minutes down the road anymore. You know what I mean? So you want to feel comfortable. So the fact that Mario and Mirabal can foster these kinds of relationships with parents, that's special. So um, elsewhere – Official visit has been locked in, uh, and it's like I, I need to make up a new list for the weekend of June oh, 9th because wow. there's like 30 guys on it. So four-star defensive lineman L.J. McRae. We've talked about him before on this show. I talked with Larry Bluestein about him a couple months ago. He's from Mainland High School in Daytona Beach, uh, six foot six and a half, two sixty. 260. This is another guy whose wingspan is crazy, Chalupa. It's six foot crazy. six with a six foot nine wingspan uh now you know the uh the gators have been trending highest in his yes. recruitment to this point so my miami is trying to make up for that with lj mccray but it's like every other top defensive lineman wants to check out miami so why not add one more to that list that that's what it seems like it seems like we've become a, a bit of a mecca for defensive linemen in this class it just seems like they're migrating to jason taylor and yeah. and salivea it, it again you at least want to pick up the phone. You at least want to hear what they have to say. And then you look at a guy like Justin Scott or David Stone, they started taking visits and never stopped. It seemed like they had one in mind. They came once and then circled back and circled back and circled back. I think for LJ, it, it, he probably just needs to sit down with Gidry. I don't know if the last time he was here, if he got to talk to Gidry. You know, so this may be mm. – a bit of a newer process for him. It was probably just a Jason Taylor. And I don't think Jason Taylor was officially an on-field coach either at the time. 
So much like Ryan Wingo's second visit, this visit could be completely different for him. It could be a completely different eye-opening visit for him. Another just disruptive defensive end. Like Dono said, his wingspan is just insane. Like it's, his arms are really long, great pass rusher. He's got that bend that you look for in a pass rusher with that kind of length. He's another guy that if we can start stacking these defensive linemen in this class, like, you know, like, like Blue says, that's how you change a program. You know, it's, it's not just about what gap do we have to fill for next year. It's about, you know, building depth so that who's next, you know, that, that defensive line rotation that Georgia had, we want that. And you, you get that by depth. So you don't stop when you get two or three defensive tackles. We want five. We want right. four defense. You know, you you want that rotation, and you want guys competing. That's what that's what the Canes are all about. It's about competing, and you want guys to hunt. Man, L.J. McCray, add him with someone like Moss and Bain and Mesador, and ah, just this <laughs> defensive line class is just so exciting. Yeah. So you know, these June visits are amazing, and I'm really hoping they can turn a corner with L.J. We got the new guys in place on the staff. Hopefully they can make a big impression this time he comes down. I want to talk about a couple of different pass catchers. Uh, Kylan Fox, the four-star tight end. Uh, I, I know that this is someone that, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot more about Caleb Odom on this show, but I like Kylan Fox almost just as much as I like yeah. Caleb Odom. I mean, this is someone, how do you think he could fit if he winds up at Miami? They're, they're similar but there are differences because you, you do see Kylan play in line a little bit more. He he plays more of a traditional tight end. They flex him out to they split him out at receiver. But he's another one of those tight ends that that can do a little bit of everything. Block, run, run routes from in line, run routes from the slot, a matchup absolute nightmare got the long arms just like Caleb Odom it seems like the tight ends that they're recruiting are these matchup nightmare kind of guys you know Elijah Arroyo it, whereas I, here's a good comparison I go Elijah Arroyo for Fox Skinner for for Odom Odom's a a receiver in a tight end's body essentially whereas Kylan Fox is a tight end he, he is a full-fledged tight end. He's also an athlete. He plays some defensive end. He's got those long arms, that quick first step. So he's got the tenacity that you like on the defensive line, and he brings that when he blocks as well. I, I like him quite a bit. I know our quarterback, Judd, likes him. Yeah. So it would be interesting to have him down here as well. You can't have too many athletes on the uh, in the receiving room and the tight end room. We are tight end you. So you cannot have too many of those. You look at us this year with with uh, Riley Williams in the room, Jackson Carver, um, McCormick, Skinner, and Arroyo, the depth, just like we just talked about with the defensive line. You want that same thing in all your skill positions. So bringing in a guy like Fox, who's really versatile and can go vertical like we mm -hmm. want, he'd be a great addition for us. And you guys guessed it. He's visiting June 9th. And oh, you know, yeah. who else is visiting <laughs> June 9th? You talk about players that Judd Anderson really likes. We know Judd oh, is a huge fan of Braylon Staley, the four-star <laughs> wide receiver out of Aiken, South Carolina. Uh, Miami going to have to battle Clemson for this player. Clemson yes. has been considered to be the favorite in his recruitment. He's from that area, of course. And, wow, there's so many different wide receivers we talk about on this show, Chalupa, that I feel like Braylon Staley doesn't get enough love because we spend so much time on the, you know, the JoJo Traders and the Ryan Wingos of the world and, you know, Jeremiah Smith, if there's, if there's even a chance. But, you know, there, there, there's a chance with Braylon Staley. He's also going to be here June 9th that he he's coming back as a matter of fact, because yeah. he's been already for a visit, but he's coming for another visit. Um, explosive. I love this dude's film. And I know we may not be in the lead right now with him, but actually spoke with his father the other day on Twitter and he does like Miami. Good. He does like what we're doing. Loves Kevin Beard. I mean, it's what you hear from all these receivers. They love Coach Kevin Beard. But what I like about Staley is he gives you a little bit of everything. He is a complete receiver, can play in the slot, can play outside. He has that full route tree that, that you hear people talk about when they talk about an elite receiver. He can do the dirty work in between the hashes, 
great after the catch, and he is a vertical threat. He can beat you over the top. When you turn on his film, they try to double him. You watch like the second half of a lot of his film, and the safety's over the top, and that that kid has no chance either. Okay. And then 50-50 balls for someone that's not, you know, six five, six four, dominates 50-50 balls. He's got, he's got, he can jump out the gym, high points, like you wouldn't believe. You know, he's a receiver that would be awesome to to add to this class. And our ambassador absolutely loves him. Judd, Judd's high on him. Anytime you hear Judd talk about some of the recruits he wants in this class, Braylon's either either in the top three or the first one he mentions. And hopefully getting him down with the newer staff, there's there's a little bit more film for him to watch now, too, with, with the spring game. He can see Shannon Dawson's offense. It's hard to visualize yourself in something if you haven't seen it right he can see it and he can now talk to some of the receivers that have done it you know colby could have given him some advice on what he thinks it may look like but now that colby knows the offense understands the offense jacoby george can tell braylon oh no this is how it's going to work i've seen what you can do you can do this this and this in this offense so i think this this visit for a lot of the past catchers is going to be really huge because now they can actually sit down with coach shannon dawson and it's not a how we think you fit in it's no here's some film this is these are the route concepts we like to run and this is why we think you're good here. I, I really like Staley. I, I think you, you can't have too many receivers. I know someone's going to say, yeah. well, you guys want everybody. Yes, I want JoJo. I want Wingo. Yes, you, you. but you want to stack that room because what Shannon Dawson likes to do is he likes to present different personnel groupings. You need a lot of receivers to do that, and you need different styles of receivers to do that as well. And Braylon Staley can fit two or three roles in Shannon Dawson's offense. I love it. We'll close it out on that note, guys. Make sure if you want to take your everyday or experience to the next level, you join our exclusive SMS texting service through subtext. Yes, we include the link in the show description below. Click that link. You're a couple clicks away from getting SMS text messages right to your phone from me. Uh, do one on ones on there. Give you guys some recruiting scoops. We like to give you the heads oh, up yeah. when there's a commitment that's about to happen. Which that's seems the to happen part. every night. Yeah. If there if there is a massive selling point. And I'm speaking as a consumer of of, of subtext. It's it's the bat signals yeah. because nowadays we don't know when these things are coming out. There is something so clutch to that text app where Dono literally will let us know, hey, bat signal. And he gives you the icky on who it might be as well. And a lot of times that's even sometimes that's before Dennis Smith will put out his. So it is it's a game changer to have that app. Trust me, it's. It's a lifesaver. I'm like Commissioner Gordon. It's my job to monitor it's, the it's, signal. You know? <laughs> it's, it's awesome. I'm telling you, it's it saved me on numerous occasions where I'm, I'm laying down. I'm like, oh, recruit. <laughs> I got to get up because I haven't. Because it may be someone you haven't seen. It may be someone you don't know yet or just a rumor. You know, we may like a recruit that, that we're monitoring and you're hopeful that he'll sign with us. And then it breaks that he's crystal balled somewhere else. You get that in the subtext right away. So a lot of times you don't even need to open your Twitter. You just open your phone and everything you need. Kane's news is usually there for the day. Awesome. I appreciate that so much. And, and Chalupa Batman, let people know where they can find you, my friend. Everyone sees at Corey Carmona on Twitter. You're part of the You Heard podcast, which is awesome. You're a colleague of mine at allhurricanes.com, which is so awesome to have you there. What are you working on for this coming week? So uh, all hurricanes, I uh, just wrote an article on Monarch's uh, explosive trio, AJ Hairston, Samari Reed and Jamari Brady, big fan of uh, AJ Hairston. And that offense is just, it's, it's going to be ridiculous this year. The you heard pod uh, every Wednesday and Sunday, we drop episodes. Uh, we like to have a lot of fun over there. We, make fun of each other. We talk Kane's football right now. We're in the midst of breaking down the whole season. So last week uh, we did Miami, Ohio. So we're just breaking down every, uh, every opponent as we go week by week and making fun of each other as we do. And uh, obviously check me out on locked on Canes and check out locked on Canes weekly. I'm always in the chat. I'm sure if you're in the chat now, you know that Absolutely. it's a great show. Not, I'm not just saying that because I'm on it. It honestly is the best Kane show out there. So check it out. And subscribe if you're not. 
I appreciate it. I appreciate I appreciate everyone else. Make sure you guys subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button if you're watching on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe on all the audio platforms. And we will talk to you again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network. Your team.